last time we saw the design of tension members so here i want to add some more points to that discussion so earlier we solved one example where we found out the design strength of this angle section we used one angle section and connected it using boards so we checked the design strength in yielding in rupture and in block shear and the minimum of the three gave us the design strength now let's say instead of one angle section we connect two angle sections on opposite faces or let's say we connect the angle sections on the same face two angle sections but on the same face so what will be the design strength in this case so the is 800 2007 it says that the design strength in case of two angle sections connected on same face or on the opposite face it is equal to two times the design strength of one angle section so you don't have to do anything further just what we found out for one angle section multiplied with two that gives us the design strength for this type of connection this type of angle section when we have used two angle sections on same face or on the opposite face whereas in case of working stress method this was different if we had used two angle section then according to that code it was greater than twice the design strength of one angle section so this is the difference here that's what i wanted to tell after that for the block shear criteria you should always try to find all the possible combinations in which the block shear failure can happen so let's say we have this lap joint here now in this case how can the block shear failure happen we have already seen this type so here it can break from here and here this type this way it can fail but if you say that it can also fail like this then in case of lap joint it cannot happen because this bolt is still connecting the two plates but if we are considering instead the butt joint so in butt joint let's say there will be a cover plate if it is a single cover butt joint or double cover butt joint depending upon that so this is these are the two plates and let's say we have used one cover plate on the top and this is our bolting so how the failure can happen in this case the failure can happen on this surface as well as on this surface so these are the two possible failure that can happen because if this failure is also happening this red one then also this part of the plate will be separated from the rest whereas in case of lap joint it was not happening in this case this bolt was still connecting the two plates so you should always try to find all the possible criteria of block shear block shear failure now after that there is there are few more small things one is tension splice so just you should know what it is so tension splice many times what happens when we don't have the full length let's say we are trying to we want a tension member of 10 meters but we don't have such a big length and we have only 5 meter or whatever then for the remaining 5 meter we'll what how will we make it 10 meter we'll connect two members obviously now the connection of these two members is called the tension splice so it can be a butt joint or it can be a lap joint as well so all different kind of connections are possible but the purpose is we are trying to make this full length what we need by connecting two or more members now if this splice we are making then obviously there will be a connection either using bolting riveting or welding then again you have to check for all these tension failure criteria or for the design strength so design strength as we already discussed how we find out 
we check in yielding we check in rupture and we check in block shear so all the criteria that we studied earlier will be used for this tension splice also just you should know this word tension splice otherwise the design part is same what we have seen already the last topic that is remaining in this unit is lug angles so when when we connect the gusset plate with some angle or let's say channel section then we use some connection length if we are using this type of connection then this would be length of connection now let's say it has to transfer a very high load then for that this connection length will increase and sometimes we don't have this sufficient connection length available and to avoid that we can use lug angles so how will this lug angle work so this will be our main channel or angle section and here we'll provide one lug angle in this fashion so it will be connected to the main member that is the angle section and it will be connected to the gusset plate also so some part of the load which is being which has to be transferred through this main angle and the gusset plate it will be transferred using this lug angle so it reduces the overall length of this connection that is the purpose but here we have to introduce more bolts and more connection so nowadays it is not preferred but for our consideration let's see let's see some specifications and how we go for the design of these lug angles and how the code has given the design procedure so first thing it says the effective connection of lug angle shall as far as possible terminate at the end of the member so it means that if this is your main member and from here this is the gusset plate so the this lug angle should end here that is end of the plate main plate is here so it should not go beyond this point it should end be before this before or at least at this point so it can end here here but it should not go beyond this end of the main plate that's what it means after that second one we have the connection of lug angle to main member shall preferably start in advance of the member to the gusset plate it means that this connection between the lug angle and the main plate that is here it's if this is the main plate so here it's it should start between the lug angle and the main plate before it start between the gusset plate and the main plate so if gusset plate is starting here then lug angle and main plate will start before that after that third one is minimum of two bolts rivets or equivalent weld should be used so at least two bolts we have to use after that it has the if the main member is an angle so main member either we use the channel section or we use the angle section so first it says for an for an angle section so if it is an angle section let me draw so if it is an angle section so it says the whole area of the member shall be taken as effective rather than net effective section so it simply means the whole area what we have to consider here should include connected leg as well as the outstanding leg both we have to consider here because both are helping in transferring the load the outstanding leg is connected to the lug angle whereas the main the connected leg is connected with the gusset plate so both the legs are helping in the helping in transferring of load and the whole area of the member is gross area less deduction of bolt holes that is we have to deduct for the bolt hole from the gross area to obtain the whole area the strength of lug angle and fastener connecting lug angle to gusset plate should be at least 20% more than the force in outstanding lag so first we have to find out this force in outstanding lag and in, in the connected lag so how we find that 
so for that let's say we have these two legs connected one is connected and one is outstanding and let's say area of connected leg is a1 and area of outstanding leg is a2 and the load that we have to transfer here is t so t is the total load that has to be transferred through this angle section now how will we find out the load in this outstanding leg so so this load is transferred in proportional to their area that is for outstanding leg we can write a2 upon a1 plus a2 multiplied with t it will give you the load in outstanding leg so let's say it is equal to x now let's come back to the provision it says the strength of lug angle and fastener connecting lug angle to gusset plate so this lug angle and gusset plate we are talking about this connection so the connection strength it should be at least 20% more than the force in outstanding leg so if the force in outstanding leg is x then this connection should be designed for 1.2x that's what it says after that we have one more that is the strength of connection connecting lug angle and main member shall be at least 40% more than the force carried by the outstanding leg that is for this connection between the lug angle and the main angle it should be it should be designed for at least the value of 1.4x where x is the load in this outstanding leg and that's how we calculate this so that is about the if we if our main member is an angle and let's say if our main member is a channel so main member can be channel also so in that case how this thing will work so it will look like this here we'll connect one lug angle and here also we can connect one lug angle so the first one it says that as far as possible it should be symmetric so this connection that is this is your channel and this top and below it is lug angle so you should provide a symmetric connection that is it is better to provide one lug angle on the top and one lug angle one lug angle on the bottom so it will be symmetric after that it says the strength of connection connecting lug angle and gusset plate should be at least 10% more than the force in outstanding leg so force in outstanding leg we can calculate as i said earlier and the strength of connection connecting lug angle to gusset plate that is this connection here it should be 1.1 times x and the second one is connection connecting lug angle to main member that is here we'll connect the lug angle and the main member and so for that it should this connection should be designed for at least 1.2x so these are all the provisions about the lug angles the design if i take the example it will be very long and it is not necessary for the objective point of view so that we can see later after we have covered other subjects as well